Hello, this is a quick introduction to the XTEC type system framework. Um, before we look at how it works, let me show you what it does. Imagine you have a little expression language as this one, like this one, where you can define variables and then, you know, do a bunch of expressions to calculate stuff. Um, then, for example, if this variable C was actually a string, then you should get an error here because now um, you expect, you know, you can't multiply or you can't add an int and a string. If you change this back to an integer, the error is going away. Um, there are more examples, for example here, uh, subtyping. If you assign a float to an int, this doesn't work, but if you assign an int, or is it an int to a float, that does work. Um, you can even press Control shift i or any other key you assign to it to show you how the type has been calculated. In this case, it's a number literal and there is a dot in it, so it's a float. And if you, for example, look at this plus guy here, actually, let's go here, then you can see that uh, the common type for the left and right side of a plus is, you know, in this case, a float, because if you add a float and an int, you get a float because that's the more general type. So again, this works. Uh, this is an error because you can't assign a float to an int. Um, you can do things like structured types where um, you assign, you know, you define enumer enumerations here. And if you assign a circle, well, a shape, an enum to a color variable, it doesn't work. You can work with uh, things like arrays where I have implemented that, you know, if you assign an array of ints to an, to an array of floats, it works right here. But if you assign a float array to an int array, it doesn't work. So it's like polymorphism or subtyping within the element type. And you can do very strange things like type coercion, where if you assign a string to an int variable, obviously it doesn't work. But in this case, I've built it in a way where um, if the string actually contains something that can be converted into a number, then it's valid. So that's a kind of on-demand type conversion. Um, this is the main uh, functionality of the framework. There is also um, additional support for testing because if you have more or less complex typing rules and type constraints, then you want to write test cases that verify that you know the errors are shown whenever you expect them to be shown. So if we go to the development workspace, um, you can, for example, take a look at these tests here, and you can see, uh, for example, in the array, uh, there's a little internal DSL that says on the issues for a formula, that's one of the meta classes, you expect, uh, for the formula with this name, you expect exactly one error that contains this substring. So this is a way of easily writing test cases that uh, test your, uh, well, any constraints, but it's particularly important for type system. So how does the system work? Well, um, as I've uh, maybe mentioned, uh, a type system has to do several things. It has to uh, define typing rules and it has to implement type checks. So um, let's look at um, the language. Here is my expression language. And it has a grammar that looks as you would expect. It has this um, action thingy going on to implement a, a nice, nicely structured tree for expressions. I'm not going to talk much about that. Here is uh, the type system itself. It's um, a class you implement manually. You probably want to inherit from default type system. And basically the way this works is that you declare with this uh, kind of code in the initialize method, you declare typing rules. For example, you say that if the system wants to find out the type of a string literal, please use string type. String type is just another meta class defined in the grammar. You, it could be defined anywhere as it just has to be some E object basically. And this use fixed type says that the type of a string literal is fixed to be string. Um, if you want to know, for example, the type of a variable declaration, like int i equals something, then the type of the overall variable declaration 
is the type of its type attribute. And as you can see here, up here, the primitive types use themselves as their type. And then, um, you know, the type of a symbol reference is the type of the reference symbol, right? Um, you want to say that um, an integer is a subtype of float, right? That's the way you do it with declare subtype. Um, if you want to know what the type of a plus is, it's the common type of plus left and plus right. You know, left and right are the two arguments of the plus. And common type takes into account the subtyping hierarchy. And now type constraints are written with these ensure clauses where you want to say, for example, that the, the left side of a plus is either an int or a float. You can have a comma separated list you know, uh, of any arbitrary type object. Or this ensure all compatibility means that for a formula, the type, um, well, the expression part of, you know, the initializing expression on the right side of the equals has to be the same type as the type or a subtype. This, this all compatibility means that it has to be um, a sub, the same type or a subtype. And so basically this is how you specify the typing rules in case your rules are not you know, declaratively specifiable, then you can write code. For example, the type of a number literal depends on whether it has a dot in it or not, right? So you write a method type with the thing you want to type, and then you pass in this trace object. And, you know, then you can basically check if the value contains a dot, then it's a float type, else it's an int type. And this trace is a way of, you know, keeping track of how the type was calculated this is the kind of comment you get when you press this hotkey in the editor and so on, right? Um, so this is the way you do it um, to tie it into the validation. So you get the error messages. You can see in the validation there is one rule for any e object and it simply delegates to the type system and so on. So the system has been used in real languages with uh, C-like or Java-like type systems, not quite as complicated, not so much polymorphism, no generics, but I mean, real languages have been built with it in various projects. There is uh, extensive documentation, 20, 30 pages. There is example code. You can get this example code from the Google code page. Let me know what you think uh, and uh, comments to photo at acm.org. That's V-O-E-L-T-E-R at acm.org. Thanks.